All right, guys, as you can see, we are messing with the Junker Tahoe one more time. So the rear end went out on it. I've got a new to me replacement here. I'll show you guys a little bit, kind of waiting on it to dry. I was doing a little rattle can restoration on it. So, pss, pss, and uh, we're gonna wait for that to dry before I throw it on. And uh, I wanted to show you what's going on with this old one. So, I was casually driving, not getting on the, the gas or anything. Uh, there we go. As you can see in there, the spider gears are uh, a little bit chewed up. Let me see that. Hopefully you can see that better. There you go. And need to rotate it a little more. You can see that side is a little eaten up as well. Um, I was planning on upgrading the posse unit in here anyways. And uh, the brake shields fell off at some point in life. And uh, I was going to go over the axle anyways. And I ended up finding this one. Uh, I'd been sitting for a while, but... Uh, it's essentially the same axle, same gear ratio, same everything. And this one's a little more complete. So uh, we're going to go with this guy. Cleaned it up, threw some paint on it, um, waiting for it to dry. But uh, I'm also going to be doing a lowering kit on the old Tahoe. I've been wanting to do it for a while, but um, I was just kind of waiting for for an excuse to take it apart. And when the rear end went out, that kind of gave me an excuse to start cutting stuff. So I've been doing what they call the um, free travel mod, I believe it's called. So this piece uh, normally sits on here like that. You can see it's welded on right there. Um, but essentially what you have to do is you have to cut it off in order for the axle to have a little more travel room. So the axle is going to be sitting about here. You know, when you put some weight in the truck, it'll go up and down and so on, doing suspension things. Um, I already did this side, so essentially what you do is you cut. Um, I'll try to show you on the other side, but you cut the outside lip here. So this guy, you cut that open and you pry this open with a pry bar or whatever. I got my uh, pry bar here. So you pry this open and then you can either go in there with the grinder, shove the grinder in like that and do another cut in the back side. Or uh, if you have a saw saw or any other cutting device, you can do that as well. Um, I'll try to show you on the other side. I still haven't done the other side. so. I'll try to show you a little more details on how to cut it, but um, essentially that's um, that's one of the first uh, steps for the lowering kit anyways. So we're going to cut, and you can see here where the frame and this uh, doubler here kind of meet. So take the outline of the frame and just do a, try to do a, a line all the way back and yeah that should be fairly simple so let's get to it So there you guys have it, that's the first cut. And as you can see, it's pretty much right along the frame. Um, don't worry about 
the cut being perfect doesn't have to be and i might have missed a little chunk here at the end but i have to go over that uh hey lola what are you doing baby um now i'm gonna try and see if i can finish this cut at the end and spread the the uh the doubler open you guys can see i've made a decent gap on the doubler and the frame side uh, i'm gonna try to get in there with the saw saw it's got a metal blade obviously now you keep in mind that's your gas tank over there so whether you start this way or this way uh just be mindful of the gas tank that way you don't cut a hole in it uh, i've seen a few people open this up a little more and uh that way you can gain a little more access i'm gonna try and uh do it like this so hopefully it works if it doesn't we'll open it a little more Well guys, that's the other cut. Uh, this one was a little more trouble than the passenger side for some reason. But uh, yeah, there it is. That's the chunk that you're gonna cut out of it. The old uh, bump stock fell out of it. So um, you can see there, it's uh, I guess the back side is not as clean as the front side, but uh, that's what the grinding wheel is for so next we're gonna hit it with the grinding wheel i'm gonna swap the wheel on the grinder hit it with the grinding wheel um get rid of whatever rust is in the area and then uh i'll throw some paint and call it a day well at this point guys i have the axle back and the tahoe um the free travel mod is complete on both sides and um i did end up picking up a djm uh, relocation kit and a shock relocation kit for the i guess it was a shock extender back here and this is a control arm extender um this is what it's gonna look like i'm still waiting on this uh, passenger side control arm the lower control arm um but this is what essentially you're looking at so the lower control arm uh, relocation mount will go up where the uh the control arm used to mount before you can see those two bolts and the kit will come with the hardware that you'll need control arm will mount down here slightly lower i'll show you on the other side um let me show you on the back side. Back side, you're, you're looking at the shock extender, which will uh, mount over or under. I'm sorry, we'll go under the control arm uh, bracket here. So, shock extender first, uh, control arm bracket next. On top of that, um, I'm not sure that I like this bolt here in the middle. It was supposed to be for the shock extender to mount onto the axle but since i added the uh the second bracket there's actually no threads uh coming out on that nut so i'm probably gonna pick up a different bolt slightly longer um other than that let me show you what the uh, springs look like and i'll probably go on the other side and show you the uh the lower control arm but here are the springs so you can tell this is the old uh spring this is going to be the new spring there pretty nice i would say and uh here's what it'll kind of look like 
once it's all almost complete. I've got the same setup. I've got this shock extender or shock mount extender. Um, same deal with the nut in the middle. Um, there's not enough threads coming out of that. But um, yeah, like I said, uh, shock extender will go on there first up against the axle then the uh, lower control arm uh, bracket and then you can mount your lower control arm onto that like so let's get this rope out of the way um, just like that and I'm still uh, waiting on brakes I'm gonna do some brakes and I'm probably gonna go ahead and throw the new shocks and the new springs on it so So, so far, we talked about the free travel mod, how to take care of that. Talked about the uh, lower control arm extenders, the shock extenders uh, back here in the back side. Um, talked about the hardware you're going to need for the two of these. Remember how you got to find a longer bolt there if you end up going with the two um the two brackets here um i'm gonna go over the shocks and like i said it was a beltec a street performance shock i'll throw a link down in the description that's the springs back there um i think it's like a four inch uh lowering spring or something three or four inch lowering spring from beltec that's the part number on it all right folks so uh we're coming up on the the very last of the rear end uh, stuff, rear end lowering kit. So here's what the uh, sway bar is going to look like after your um, lowering kit is installed. So make sure your sway bar is on the outside of the uh, sway bar links um, on both sides. Here, let me show you the other side. It's gonna be the driver's side. So that's gonna look like. Uh, otherwise, the sway bar will be getting caught up or all over the place. Probably in those brackets down there where the uh, uh, D rings mount. And uh, on the driver's side, you will have to move the D ring over. So there's the original uh, mounting hole here and you're gonna have to scoot it over uh probably like two inches or so now uh, i was having an issue with the uh track bar so the original track bar uh took it off because obviously the rear diff had to get replaced and then i'm not 100 percent sure how it happened but um when i was going back in the original track bar wouldn't line up. The only way it would line up is if you scoot the rear diff over, I don't know, like two inches. So it wasn't centered and that was bothering me. So uh, I went ahead and got a uh, adjustable track bar. Uh, let me show you that real quick. This is the adjustable track bar. Uh, it's actually pretty, pretty hefty. Uh, it came from Supreme Suspension. Um, never had anything from the, uh, from these guys, but it comes with a bunch of stickers. Um, looks like an air freshener and a jigger there, which is pretty cool. A little truck jumping on whatnot, a little keychain, and more stickers, but, uh, this is a pretty, pretty sweet track bar. Uh, it's come with the grease, uh, fittings and you can you know adjust the the length of it that way we can center the uh center the axle so i'm gonna go ahead and put it on and get her done so now we have the track bar installed um it actually looks pretty nice fits really good so um according to the instructions it tells you to install track bar kind of like wherever it sits wherever the axle's sitting. And then once you have it installed, you adjust your uh, jam nuts here, either tighten or loosen 
to uh, move your uh, rear end to the left or to the right. The easiest way that I figured out um, would be taking a measuring tape, uh, bring your measuring tape over to the wheel well, bring it up against the body, and then uh, measure right up against the tire. That's about a foot on the right side. And uh, if we go over to the left side, you know, obviously I've already adjusted mine, centered. Bring it up to the body, come down. That's about 12 inches on both sides. So I would say that's pretty centered. You know, there are many ways you can do that. Um, you obviously figure out whichever way works easier for you. But uh, that's gonna be it for the, uh, the lowering kit in the rear. And uh, the only thing I gotta do now will be figure out what to do with this e-brake uh, cable. I might end up uh, throwing a zip tie up against the track bar, you know, maybe something like that. Two zip ties or something, you know, along the track bar like that. We'll see. It used to be uh, held with some brackets on the uh, old track bar, but since that's uh, no longer an option, I gotta figure out what to do about that. Uh, also, on the track bar, since we're talking about that now, don't forget to, uh, once you install your grease fittings, make sure they're facing down. And then uh, that'll be it. Alright guys, so yesterday I finished uh, lowering the Tahoe. I didn't exactly get to show you the end product, but here we go. So, again, this was only the rear um, lowering kit. I had to sit for a while, the rear end went out, so I went ahead and got started on that. Now, I do need to lower the front still, but uh, I think it's turning out pretty, pretty sweet.